I'm here today with Leo, <laughs> who is a book cover designer. I'm here to pick his brains about design. So I wanted to ask you about how you got into book design to start with. I tried stalking you online, but I couldn't find much about sort of <laughs> where you'd studied or anything like that. So. Um, well, I studied at the Norwich School of Art and Design, which is mm -hmm. just about two minute walk from here. Um, and um, I suppose I, I got into book cover design in my second year. Um, where we were given a, a book cover design project um, and I went out and picked up a copy of Creative Review so I was doing a bit of research and I came across this article that had David Pearson um, being interviewed and there was an article about John Gray as well and I kind of fell in love with the idea of doing a book cover yeah. design it's, it's quite a fertile creative way to design something mm. so after that I um, I've manipulated most of my design, uh, degree projects into being book covers, yeah. much to the annoyance of my tutor, <laughs> but by the time it got to my degree show, I was able to take everything off my degree show and put it straight into a portfolio, mm. and then, um, yeah, cut it around London. So do you think a degree is necessary to mm. do what you do? I, I, think, I, I think it helps, but I, I don't think it's completely necessary, no. Mm. I mean, certainly, none of the publishers were looking at my CV no. when I was um, uh, showing my work to them. It's all, it's all about the work. If, you, if your work is good, you know, good enough to be published, then they'll feel happy, regardless of the degree. Were you going around looking for a job at a publishing house, or were you just kind of throwing your, your stuff at them, saying, well, if you need something in this style, I'm here? Yeah, well, I suppose I was I was looking for a job, but um, because I have a, a little boy in Norwich, I mm -hmm. couldn't go to live in, in London, because um, uh, I had him half the week, so uh, I was going along to these publishing houses looking for a job, and then dropping in halfway through saying, by the way, I can't live in London, yeah. but if you've got anything freelance, then I'll take it. Um, uh, and it took a few months before um, uh, something became available. Yeah. And it kind of snowballed from there, did it? Um, um, well, I suppose, it, uh, whilst I was working in-house freelance for HarperCollins, mm -hmm. um, uh, I was uh, emailing around to Penguin and all the other publishing houses, trying to get them to, to give me some covers. and. Yeah, I suppose it took about, uh, about four years to, to get a nice list of mm. clients, enough yeah. for me to be able to work from Norwich. Yeah. So were you doing other graphic design projects at the time? Yeah. No, nope, just other books. Clients? Just books? Just book covers. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. Did you have another job at the time? Or no. Just doing no, that? no, it's just book covers. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's, yeah. that's very impressive. <laughs> 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 I imagine that a lot of, um, to start with, a lot of graphic designers would have uh, a day job. Or, well, I think it, it depends. If you're working in-house at, um, at publishers, um, I mean, mm -hmm. full-time salaries and uh, freelancers, yeah, yeah you know, if, you, if they give you enough work, then a day job is necessary at all. So, what skills and attributes are necessary or essential to what you do? Um, I'd say, I mean, it depends really what sort of book covers you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I've got the style myself. I couldn't do it as I'm told. I'd, I'd say if you're doing this sort of the range of book covers that say I would design, then it helps to know how to draw. Mm -hmm. um, it helps to know how to use Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator. Um, and, and I think that's about it, you know. And maybe a, a, a working knowledge of typography, knowing how type sits, but I mean, even now, I don't think you have to be, I'm certainly not that exact with it. I think you can yeah. judge a little bit by eye if you want to. Be. And the knowledge of the literature as well? Yeah, yes, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not that literary a person myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think at heart I'm probably a frustrated film poster designer. <laughs> but I think, I mean, yeah, I think it does help to know uh, a bit about authors and kind of what what aesthetic some authors have. Mm -hmm. You know, someone like Jonathan Franzen or Stephen King has a very particular style of aesthetic yes. and a very yeah. particular style of design that gets published. Mm -hmm. But I'd say that helps, but again, I don't think it's entirely necessary. So. You mentioned about the drawing and the Photoshop. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what percentage of your work you do on the computer and how much is by hand. I see that you have this very impressive Wacom tablet. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this uh, it's all done on the computer, really, but it's kind of, it's done through that. So if it's yeah. done by hand, but it's digital. Yeah. If that makes sense. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. if it didn't have that, it would be on paper. Yeah. And I would be um, tracing over sketches and then scanning it in and then manipulating it with Photoshop. So ultimately, mm -hmm. it's all digital. Yeah. Uh, I was wanting to talk a bit about the process of designing. Mm -hmm. what, what do you get sent from the publisher? 
to how much freedom do you have? You uh, it totally depends on the project, but you, you, you get sent a brief that will that will detail um, like a, a synopsis of the story mm -hmm. so, and key sales points basically a story of such and such about World War Two or divorce or whatever. Um, and uh, they'll they'll say where they see the book being sold, Waterstones or Sainsbury's or you know wherever. Um, and uh, they'll give a list of comparative authors um, to, to give to give you a kind of flavour of what sort of style of design they want you to do. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're lucky, some visual pointers, which doesn't always happen, but they'll give you something specific like a, um, a butterfly or um, I get asked quite often um, like a ring of trees going into a forest. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done quite a few leafy covers recently. Yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, unless sometimes you get given an open brief, but you just have to read it and show them yeah. what you think would work. So is that more speculative work? Or? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, other, other briefs are very strict, and mm. um, they'll they'll kind of they'll they'll map out the cover exactly for you before you even start designing mm. it. You mentioned you've done some YA covers. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that in in YA books at the moment, that handlettered. Sort of quite in. So yeah. I guess that's why they came to you. Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, there was um, there's 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 a yearly awards night called um, the Academy of British Cover Design, mm. um, and one of the books I did called "She Is Not Invisible" by Mark Sedgwick mm. got shortlisted. Right. Um, and I suppose maybe that that got some attention. I'm not sure, but. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of the work I do lately is young know, adult stuff. Yeah, mm. and a lot of it, like I say, is all kind of hand drawn. Yes. Yeah. The Fault in Our Stars has appeared on a lot of briefs that I get given. Yes. You know, um, as yeah. a as a comparison. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's probably it's that. That's mm. such a huge book. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I reckon it's uh, it's all to do with trends. The publishers think yeah. such and such sold however many thousands, hundreds of thousands of copies. So we just ate that star. And, yeah. 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 Not to invade, but can you predict the next trend? Oh, I really couldn't. I Something you're really good at, hopefully. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> well, hopefully more handwriting. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, mm. uh, apart from everything else, it's really fun to do. I really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. And so much of stuff is digital now, but having that sort of that hand touch to it, I think is something that people like to see. I think so. I think it, I, I think it has a level of intimacy, I think. And I think it's, it, it makes, I, I, I think it makes a bit of more appealing. Yeah. a bit more approachable mm. than something yeah. that's, um, um, that's sort of touch set. I've, I've, I've always been more drawn to a hand-drawn book than a, mm. than a pure digital one. Are you thinking about the Amazon thumbnail as well? Because obviously that's something that's... Yeah, you kind of have to nowadays yeah. because they tell you to. I mean, I, I would rather not because I think it really hampers you as a designer. If you, I mean, it's an interesting challenge because the, the, obviously the, the cover has to stand out looking about that big. Mm. So really, you've got to make the type massive. Yeah. Unless they're you know not that fussed about it, but really because they yeah they want it to stand out, they're they're always telling you to make this type bigger or brighter or yeah so you have to think about that yeah. I know that Jen's already asked this, but it's um, just about what you're working on at the moment. You said you're working on some YA stuff. Yeah, I'm working on some uh, young adult stuff. Uh, it's called uh, oh Christ, it's called Delirium, mm. um, and uh, I'm working on repackaging Iron Round at the moment. Um, and uh, there's uh, a few other covers that I've put on with um, Penguin US, uh, both of them young adults actually. Mm. Um, and uh, a book about, uh, a number of books about divorce actually, and okay. uh, and uh, a couple of books about the Holocaust. Cheerful subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very happy books I'm working <laughs> on at the moment. <laughs> well, it'll be very interesting to see those when they come out. We, we were just saying earlier that, um, that Jen and I, we, we always sort of Recognise your style in the book. Really? Yeah. So yeah. I just wouldn't say I have a style at all. We were saying that The Wake, or was it why? Yeah, it was The Wake I saw because it looked like The End of Days, Jenny mm. Earth and Bex that you did, oh, which right. I bought yeah. on your cover. Yeah. And uh, yeah, The oh, Wake is is quite leafy. It's it's the, it's quite green. I'll show you a picture of it later. Maybe Holly Quinn said yeah. <laughs> yeah, But it's just, yeah, it's the title and then just leaves behind it. And mm. it did look like and some of others. And I thought it was yours. And then I looked on the back and realised it wasn't and felt quite indignant because I really felt like they'd yeah. stolen your style. <laughs> Have you ever had that where maybe you've pitched for something or you've sent something and they've given it a kill fee or, or whatever? or And then you see a very similar something that they have designed in-house 
Um, that's never happened to me, but I, I, it has happened. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it does happen. But you can't, it's very difficult to put, you can't copyright work. And there's no such thing as an original idea, um, no. really. So, it, you know, you can't, unless it's blatant, you, yeah. you can't really say anything about it. No. You can't really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you'll find that um, covers come out with, uh, that, uh, that you had approved, um, and then you'll see other books out on the shelf that look quite similar to what you've done for mm. like a different title. Yeah. But you know that's because you know my work would have appeared on that brief for you know, yeah. that designer. It's just it's just the way it is. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. It's been a, yeah really enlightening, and hopefully some other people have found this useful. Well. And um, yeah, go and watch Jen's video also. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. Cheers. Pleasure.